Now it has become clear that it was uh, the Havana Biennial and not the Le Magicien de la Terre, uh, the, the exhibition that was initiating the way in which globalization will take shape in art and how new biennials and other international art events would be organized in the future. The Havana Biennial, as Rachel Weisz has put it, quote, didn't claim every contributor as a magician, but rather as a citizen. And so the zone it sketched was not some neutrally shared terrain, but rather a vexed ground of much as much comprised of clashing particularities as of cohering accords." Unquote. The Biennale approached for the first time the multiple practices of contemporary art around the world out of the, main, of the Western mainstream. Even if such a groundbreaking aperture was productive as a result of being necessary, what was more important was the vision through which this challenge was undertaken. It proved to open the door to uh, the international practice of contemporary art that, still with many silences, deficits, and unbalances, we experience today. This new situation involved the increasing role of a range of new artistic and cultural subjects and new art scenes around the globe, the plural construction of an international art language, the acknowledgement of different modernities and of diverse contemporary practices. The Biennale's curatorial, artistic and cultural conception was to insist, as Weiss has said, quote, on multiple and distinct contemporaneities and on a model of culture that was fundamentally conglomerate and therefore impure and, and always unfinished. It was a model that allowed uh, for an approach to the local not mired in the archaic and of globality not flattened into homogeneity." Uh, unquote. Even more, I recognize at the time that the Biennale was imperfect and that its imperfection was a radically rupturing the prevailing imposed canonic perfections. In the 1980s, the Havana Biennial was heading to the future, not only by transforming the Biennial Institution, but in its view on the artistic and cultural intricacies in a world of international art circulation that simultaneously confronted narratives of authenticity, nationalism, and universality. Charles Edge has even said that the characteristics of some of the art shown at the 1989 bi uh, biennial, uh, quote, have become almost paradigmatic for the international contemporary art that appears the world over today, unquote showing uh, how the very manner in which art is created has been transformed by the upsurge and agency of the new cultural subjects that the Biennale summoned. The Havana uh, Biennial outed uh, the Biennial and exhibition practice, practices to the world, away from established canons and hierarchies. It queered biennials. Part of this was also because Havana, as Rafael Niemoyevsky uh, has indicated, established the contemporary biennial as a platform for the critique of modernity, reflecting the new transnational, multicultural, and diasporic identities. For this author, the Biennial was, quote, the crucial event for the history of the contemporary biennial." Unquote. Not many years ago, what was called international art and international art circulation was mainly restricted to North American and Western European practices. In 1986, amid uh, this control environment, 
the second Havana Biennale burst aggressively, presenting the first global show of contemporary art ever, a mammoth, uneven, chaotic bunch of more than 50 exhibitions and events that gather 690 artists from 57 countries, focusing on post-colonial contemporary art and not on traditional and religious visual practices. The Biennale's variegated participatory structure made it a true urban festival that involved the whole city. More importantly, never before had artists, curators, critics, and scholars from all over the world met horizontally. What made the second and the third Biennales historic was not their curating, but their curation, that's to say, its curatorial perspective. If their curating suffered from the vastness and swiftness of the task that was undertaken, and from the curator's lack of knowledge, preparation, and organization, the event's curatorial standpoint was the result of a clear vision in the making towards a true internationalization of contemporary art. The next uh, Biennale edition in 1989 introduced radical uh, curatorial changes that moved the Biennale away from the Venice and Sao Paulo paradigms, launching a new model that, influ that influenced the way in which the new biennials were organized. This transformation included the decision of basing the whole event, shows, conferences, uh, workshops, etc., on a general theme, the combination of a decentralized structure with a centralized curation that avoided national representations, the eradication of awards, and the inclusion of artists of the third world uh, diasporas. Other orientations from the previous editions were kept and increased, like a lively involvement of the city and the media, to the point that there was a feeling of the, of the Biennale being everywhere, and the decision of conceiving the event not as a show but as a complex organism consistent of diversified activities and not only of exhibitions. Its spirit was that of an urban festival. The Biennale was part of Cuba's strategy of organizing every kind of international event in all fields as a way of publicizing its political messianism and building a good image. The Biennales were supported by the Cuban government, which in turn was subsidized by the USSR at the time. The reason for the Cuban regime's in intense expenditure in cultural activity uh, has always been ideological, with a strong international side. However, we would restrict our view on this policy if we merely think that its purposes were only to promote socialist ideas, to fight against Cuba's isolation imposed by the USA, to showcase a good image of the country, and to co-opt artists and intellectuals. Cuba had a genuine Latin American and Third World cultural and political agenda that was sometimes at odds with the Soviet Union's communist orthodoxy. And as part of the role of beachhead for USSR policy that Cuba used to play, the island's peculiar character was conducted those days to try to sustain Cuba as a third world leader. Therefore, on the one hand, for historical, political, and cultural reasons, Cuba had a true inclination towards Caribbean, Latin American, and post-colonial cultures in general. On the other, this inclination was exploited and supported by the Soviet bloc to gain political influence over third world countries. The biennial 
was a paradoxical good fruit of the Cold War. In this institutional background that I have described, described very roughly, there were some positive aspects that made possible the historic role played by the Biennale. The Cuban regime launched the event pursuing political goals, remaining unaware of the Biennale's artistic and cultural scope and importance, but was smart enough to leave its construction to a team of specialists from the visual arts field. The government left considerable room for the curators involved, imposing only decisions that could have a direct political impact. It was also clear that for organizing an event dealing with such a vast range of countries, artists, and artistic poets and tendencies, it would not be possible to keep a restricted Marxist ideological frame. So, the Biennale was conceived as an open space for contemporary artists, critics, curators, and scholars from Africa, Asia, the Caribbean, Latin America, and the Middle East, including their diasporas, to meet uh, uh, and become acquainted with each other's work and ideas beyond ideology and sheer politics. The Biennale created a platform for research and promotion and at a time when artists from the peripheries, most of the world, were unknown beyond their local context. The opening of a horizontal south-to-south -south space of encounter and discussion for artists, critics, and curators from all over the world who were segregated to local or regional get ghettos, so an own space of, ex of exchange that looked for what Nancy Adajania would have termed a globalism from the south. This was a most operative function achieved by the Biennale. Gita Kapoor, uh, who was invited to the 1989 edition, has declared how this experience allowed her to relate to internationalism in a, in a much broader way. She has said that the encounter itself was a revelation, especially regarding Latin American art. Indeed, the Biennale triggered the action in the visual arts of what we call today the Global South. Of course, by creating this much needed space, the Cuban regime was successfully contributing to fulfill its practical goal of becoming a third world leader. But at the same time, it was satisfying a critical need for contemporary art outside the mainstream and was giving room to a sincere commitment by the Biennale's curators to work inspired by a vision they considered of global importance. It is crucial to take into account that the Biennale was born in the context of a radical cultural renovation that was being carried out in Cuba by a new generation of visual artists and critics that arose at the end of the 1970s. This movement, the so-called new Cuban art, transformed forever the conservative official cultural policy that had prevailed during that decade pushing the Ministry of Culture, to which the Biennale reported, towards a more liberal policy. The young artists developed a critical, postmodern, international, open approach to art, creating a new climate that was crucial to shape the Biennale's nature and to provide a vivacious environment for it. By the end of 1989, however, the new Cuban artists were trespassing the boundaries that the Cuban regime was prepared to tolerate. Their criticism of Cuban society and their deconstruction 
of the nation's official rhetoric uh, had become uh, too radical and was consequently uh, repressed. Many artists went into exile and the intense dy dynamic environment that had prevailed in the 1980s changed. As part of this backlash, I resigned from the Biennale's organizing team immediately after the 1989 edition. This decision was taken in part because of my disagreement with the way in which the event was envisaged and my concern for its future in the midst of post-Cold War stagnation and official conservatism in Cuba, and in the face of increasing censorship of critical Cuban artists that I was supporting. Anyway, the Biennale's idealistic agenda hit, hit its target and triggered the foundation of other biennials in the developing Global South. As Niemoyevsky has pointed out, Cuba, quote, marked a turn in biennial history, the birth of a new breed of contemporary biennials born of a global context and the start of its proliferation. Uh, unquote. As I said, segregation was very critical in the visual arts by the mid-80s. The, the pre-existing periodic international art events from the Venice uh, uh, Biennale to Documenta were far from being global. Very few of the artists who had participated at the time were not from Western Europe, North America, Japan, and Australia. Thus, the Havana Biennale created a new, truly international other space while acting at the same time as a gigantic Salon de Refusé that involved most of the world. To borrow a notion from world art studies, the Biennale worded, worded the old elitist biennial institution, breaking away from its canon and model. The importance of this breakthrough at the time is more evident when we witness that even today a deficit in South-South linkage and interaction persists. Unfortunately, the, the Havana Vargenial uh, evolved to become one more standard international art exhibition instead of activating its innovative orientation, experimenting new methods and strategies. And this was partially a result of losing its acting utopia. In Louis Kamnitzer's words, the Biennale mutated from an alternative independent forum to finally become a provider of the international art market. The Biennale has also become a paradoxical global event that is always curated by almost the same official team over the years. As a result, lack of curatorial focus and a rigorous uncompromised selection of artists has affected the Biennales. Such centralism has predisposed uh, the event to certain authoritarian, bureaucratic, and even repressive stance, as in the case of indirect or straightforward censorship that has occurred. Cuba was unable to reinvent itself in the new post-Cold War <coughs> in the new post-Cold War situation and became a fossil. Instead of responding to new challenging times, it introduced minor changes to keep everything the same. Although the, the Biennale's vision was already forging new times, the event was not independent enough to, to escape the destiny of the country that had created it. Thank you.